Audio camera sync. This video is brought to you by Ride Apparel. The company makes these cool positive shirts and now has restocks of the old school shirts that we've been being requested to have. You can go check them out at rideapparelco.com. Man, that sounded official. What's going on guys? Chase on two wheels here today for a video that I am so, so happy to bring you guys. If you don't know, I have been making videos about motorcycles and stuff like that for like seven years now. And to this day, up until today, I have not found what I feel like is a really good option for a motorcycle first person helmet that captures good video and captures good audio. But today, I can happily say I have the best combo that I have ever had in my entire time making motorcycle videos here on YouTube. And today, I'm gonna to take you guys through the entire process of what you gotta get to get audio that sounds and looks like this. Guys, look at this, first gear. Oh my. <laughs> Just so y'all can be clear, this is what the audio situation used to be when I started making videos. So, well, uh, yeah, let me close this and hopefully the audio will be a little better. So, yeah, that's why I have gear on. Yay! I think it's safe to say that uh, it's been upgraded just a little bit. So, anyway, today we are talking about the ultimate motorcycle helmet first person camera rig. Oh, I'm excited. Alright guys, so first off, let's talk about the helmet. Right behind me you can see my 6D ATS-1. I have found out through my testing that the helmet doesn't matter at all. So what you guys might be thinking is, oh man, it's that helmet, it's got plenty of mouth area and it helps the sound and all that kind of crap. It literally doesn't. Here's a clip that I use the exact same setup I'm going to show you guys today and I put that in a dirt helmet. So here's a clip of that. <laughs> had to bring it back there. As you can see, you can literally use this setup in any style helmet, any type of helmet, and everything works out. So it's not helmet dependent. I personally use my uh, carbon fiber ATS-1. You don't have to though. That moment where you review so many helmets, like I think that's called an ATS-1, but I really don't remember. Let's just, let's just pretend it's an ATS-1 for this video. And next up and pretty important is the camera. For this setup, you're gonna need a GoPro 5, 6, or 7. I found the setup, I figured it out, everything worked together with the 5. Found out that the Hero 6 I can make look a little better than the Hero 5, and I'm still doing some testing on the Hero 7. Haven't done it on this rig yet, but uh, maybe I will in the future. But for right now, the Hero 6 is the money. So, that's the camera, but what's super important about that camera is all of the settings you gotta have. So let's jump into the GoPro, and I'll take you guys through all of the settings that I have on the GoPro. I'm not gonna explain everything in super detail because it'll make sense with the other stuff that I'm gonna show you guys today. All right guys, so as far as settings go on your GoPro, you can see here at the bottom, I've got 4K resolution. I'm shooting at 24 frames a second in super view. Now, the key to getting good footage is if we swipe over, we get the Pro Tune settings. Here, I've got my shutter speed on auto, but if we're shooting at 24 frames a second, you would probably wanna keep it on 48. I've done testing on the shutter speed. You can leave it on auto, you just have to use something called an ND filter. Now don't worry, we'll talk about those later in the video so you'll understand what an ND filter is. But the shutter needs to be on auto or one over 48. The ISO minimum needs to be 100, the ISO maximum needs to be 400. The white balance, I normally leave that on auto and it works fine. Sharpening, definitely keep that on low. You can add sharpening when you're editing, you can't take sharpening away. Another part of editing, we're gonna use GoPro Color. I find the GoPro Color gives the best look for me, that's why I use it. And the audio is off. I realize audio being off sounds weird and looks weird because you're like, well what about the microphone? Don't ask, this is how GoPro sets it up. If we swipe over, we have video stabilization off. You wanna have video stabilization off because these GoPros are really cool with their stabilization, but you have a neck on a helmet and that gives you the best stabilization you can have. 
if you have double stabilization, you're gonna have these weird like jumpy situations happening on your GoPro because it's stabilizing footage that's already being stabilized by the helmet being on your neck. All right, next up, auto low light. Don't need auto low light and it's not even available in the settings that we're using. And finally, manual audio control. We're gonna have that on stereo only. If we have that on wind only, the GoPro is gonna cancel out your microphone and you're just gonna hear this the whole time. And nobody wants to watch a video that sounds like that. But yeah, guys, that's the GoPro settings. Now let's jump on to the rest of the stuff that you are going to need for this setup. So if you guys have ever tried to mic a GoPro up, at least one of these newer GoPros, you have to have the beautiful dongle, this thing. Every one of you guys out there with a GoPro knows this $50 piece of stuff is required to get good audio out of every GoPro. I get a crazy amount of questions asking, Chase, how do you get such good audio? Like my GoPro doesn't sound well. That's because a microphone is inside of my helmet that runs out into that adapter and that adapter goes into my GoPro. That is the only way to get good audio in a GoPro. I don't care how much GoPro says the Hero 7's audio is better. It's better because it was terrible before and it's only slightly less terrible now. If you want good professional quality audio, you're gonna have to get this little $50 dongle. It's a pain, I know. By the way, all the links to everything I'm gonna be talking about is in the description, so if you guys wanna kit out your helmet with all of this stuff, it's easily gotten down there. So guys, video is important, we're gonna talk about more video stuff in a second, but the most arguably important item in this entire list is the microphone. I have probably spent close to $1,000 over my seven years of like doing motorcycle-based content, trying to find a microphone that could handle the bike sound, my voice, and wind noise coming at the helmet. You would think the more you spend on a microphone, the better it is, but that is not always true. I have microphones that cost over $100 that sound terrible inside of a helmet. The good news is the microphone that I was recommended by my friend Bo, this little $30 microphone called a Purple Panda, that is the best microphone, in my opinion, by far, to use in a helmet motorcycle setup or any type of motorsport. You could be jet skiing, you could be uh, just riding a motorcycle, you could be riding ATV, a side-by-side, -side, any type of power sport sounds great with this Purple Panda. It's only $30 and it comes in this little bag with a couple of little accessories. Now, if you're gonna be on a motorcycle and you're going at high speed, I personally use this little wind muff dead cat thing. That's gonna give you the best wind resistance for all of the air, any air that goes into your helmet and gets messed around. And again, with that little wind muff, even if you're on a dirt bike and you have a dirt helmet that's open up and there's all types of wind going, if you use this little dead cat, your stuff can sound like this. Pretty incredible, right? Purple Panda, highly recommend you guys grabbing that down below. If you don't do anything from this video, get a Purple Panda mic and rig it up to your GoPro. And let me know in the comments if you do that and what your audio sounds like. You will thank me later. Also, my buddy Bo, let me know about the Purple Panda. I would have had no clue had it not been for him, so freaking high five. Next up is something I surprisingly get way more comments about than I would have ever expected, and that's these little black and red aluminum cases that I have for my GoPros. Now, one of the main reasons I have these aluminum cases is so I can have a filter thread for the ND filters. We're gonna talk about those in a minute, but it allows you to screw on a little filter on the top, and the case also uh, protects the GoPro. It's an aluminum case. So in case you ever went down, your GoPro is gonna have a much better chance of staying alive. I actually had a GoPro Hero session in an aluminum case vibrate off of an R1 going like 140 miles an hour down the road, got ran over by a car, I still was able to get the SD card out out of that GoPro Hero session because it was in the aluminum case. It's just a ad little added protection and it's needed for the ND filters that we're about to talk about. All right, so guys, next up is ND filters. Now, ND filters, if you're not familiar, are basically just sunglasses for your camera. That's the easiest way to think about them. They tone down the level of light coming in, just like sunglasses do for your eyes. The reason we use ND filters to get the shots we want is because if you guys remember in the GoPro settings, we've made the shutter speed a certain amount. Now, I know a ton of you guys have always told me like, why don't you film in 60 frames a second? Everything's a lot more crisper. It is. 
60 frames a second is very crisp, but when I'm going down the road, I want you guys to feel like I feel while I'm riding. And when I'm riding, I'm focused wherever my eyes are, and then I've got motion blur of everything going past me. And that motion blur allows you to feel more immersed in my videos. So if you guys notice when I do a first ride, you are focused on what I'm looking at. If I want to focus on a, a cool car that I drive by, I have to look at that car and focus on them as I drive past them. And that allows everything else to blur out. I find that that is a much more pleasing video and much more like it sucks you into the video and you've got all these things rushing past you. That's that feeling of motorcycle riding and that's why we use ND filters. And to get that feeling, you have to lock your shutter speed on your GoPro because that way when you're going down the road, you're going too fast for the GoPro to be able to handle everything, but it can see the things in front of you. All right, so we've got an ND filter on the GoPro, but something else you need to keep in mind in the GoPro settings, we put the GoPro on super view so we can get that whole wide view of what we're looking at. Now, super view, super wide, if you put a thick ND filter on it, you're gonna have vignetting around your frame. That's where these little black things come up on the corner. I don't personally like the way those look. So I had to find ND filters that were super thin. And luckily there's this company called Ranger that makes super thin, like look how thin these things are. These guys make ND filters specifically for GoPro. They're 52 millimeter, which is how thin the threads are, which is exactly what our aluminum case is, and they fit perfectly. No vignetting, no nothing going on. Now, as far as the ND filters go, you're gonna have to change which filter you use depending on your situation. Now, through all my testing, I found out that ND8 pretty much works out best. There's an ND16, but I think it tones the light down too much. So if it's a bright sunny day with minimal clouds, I'm gonna go ND8 and then put that on the front and that's gonna give me a really good look and the lighting is gonna be pretty solid. Now, if you're in a situation like I was the other day where I was uh, filming a side-by-side -side video, I had an overcast sky and I was in the woods, so it was pretty dark. I ended up not using any ND filters on the camera at that point, but I still got that really good motion blur of the trees flying by. So with the ND filter thing, if you get that Ranger pack, you're gonna have options like, I think it's a UV filter, ND2, 4, 8, and 16. You're gonna have to just look outside and depend on what the lighting situation is. You're gonna have to decide what ND filter to use. So the last thing I'll touch on is GoPro mounting. Now, this is more of a personal preference. I personally like the GoPro to be right in front of my face and be on super view so that the audience can see everything that I'm seeing. Now, you guys might like doing a side mount where you got a little bit of the helmet in, the frame. That's gonna be up to you and it really doesn't matter where you place the GoPro. As long as you use all the items that I showed you guys today, I promise you, you will be able to get the quality that I get out of my videos. But other than that, that's about all I got, guys. I'm Chase on Two Wheels. If this video helped you out figuring out your first person helmet setup, uh, let me know down in the comments and hit that like button. If you guys like motorcycle content and filming and stuff like that, that's all I'm about here. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm gonna uh, go do some uh, cool B-roll shots so you guys don't have to look at my face as much. If you're in the outro crew, high five to ya. Let me know what the most clutch item in that list was down below in the comments. Don't forget, put hashtag outro crew. And I'm out, guys. Hopefully this setup looked and sounded great. Because it would be awkward if my video about a helmet setup with good audio and video didn't look and sound good. Okay, bye.